Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me, Tenshi talking geeky stuff. And today's video will be another console focus and of course you can tell by the title it's going to be about Nintendo 64. My last video I spoke about PlayStation 2, why it was so successful, the number one selling home console of all time and it's also my favourite console of that generation. With this video, I'm going to do the same of why this is my favorite console of that generation. But at the same time, I'm going to reverse it instead of why it's so successful. Some of the reasons why it didn't sell as well as Nintendo would like, unlike the previous two consoles. So let's start with why it's my favorite console of that generation. Well, first, I'm a big Nintendo fan. And Sega has always been my second. You know, I still like Sega. But Nintendo's always been just a little bit, you know, edges it because I just find the game better. You know, I can relate to the games a lot more. So, you know, I had the first Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and this Nintendo, and all the Nintendo consoles has been fantastic. So I had no reason not to think the same. So this comes out, it comes out a year after the Saturn and the PS1, but of course the big hoo-ha at that time was um, where Sega and Sony was using CD base, Nintendo decided to keep a cartridge. Even before the 64 come out, there was I was reading magazines, so there was no internet as it is today of course. So you get a lot of your information from all these magazines, so I was subscribing to all these Nintendo magazines and Edge magazine, game magazines, you know, sometimes even Sony magazines, uh, Sega magazines, and so on. And of course, in the magazines, they were saying that a lot of publishers and developers shifted their games to um, Sony or Sega, right? For example, the biggest game that got shifted over was Final Fantasy VII. Now, Final Fantasy VII was originally intended to be on the N64 that had some early graphics and so on, but they just couldn't squeeze the game in on the cartridge. Uh, well, they probably could have, but I just didn't want to pay for a bigger cartridge, of course. And, of course, with the S you know, CG cutscenes as well. So, you know, Square decided to um, jump over to Sony. But at the same time, I remember Nintendo's president of that time. I can't remember his name, a little bit, you know, the older guy. And he's very strict and old-fashioned. So, they, you know, he had a fallout with Square. I'm just glad that Square and Sony are kind of friends now. You know, there's a good over a decade of kind of, you know, just didn't like each other really. So, yeah, so a lot of games jumped over to uh, Sony because of CD base. You can have actually multiple CDs. And the cartridges were more expensive. Expensive, I mean. But as you're saying that, Nintendo had a lot of good games. I personally, Love the games. A lot of their games I find are some of my favorite games of all time. And here they are, some of them. And as you know, I, I, I got all the games, as many as I could. Considering as well, they were more expensive. In the UK at that time, if I remember, they were about £10 more than Sony games and uh, the Saturn games. So, a lot of reasons why I like it because the games, of course, a great controller and no loading time. I mean, we, we used to load in time now, really. Maybe, hopefully, with the new, with the new, new SSDs and the PS5 and you know, Series X kind of reduces loading time a lot. But back then, you know, cartridges offered you know, as fast uh, loading time as, as possible, right? But of course, being a Nintendo fan, so I was a little bit more biased back then as well. You know, you had, but you know, bias as in not blind bias because the games were actually amazing. Take the first game that I got with the launch, it was a bundle, it bundled with um, Super Mario 64. One of the best games of all time, one of the best platform games of all time. It revolutionized 3D platform in general. Then you got Ocarina of Time, which was my favorite game of all time. You know, it revolutionized action RPGs, you know, introduce the Z triggers, you know. And then of course, let's not forget about Star Fox 64. 
we introduced a rumble pack. I mean, you, you get a controller nowadays, and you get these some of these cheap ones. There's no rumble to it. You think what? What the hell? There's no rumble to it. I mean, rumble pack is so common nowadays. But back then, you know, they use features like when you play Zelda games, you have to go over some sort of ground. You feel the the controller rumble. That means there's a secret passage and so on. Then take a look at GoldenEye, for example. Before that, I was never really into first-person shoot-ups. It was GoldenEye that got me into uh, first-person shoot-ups, right? Don't get me wrong. I mean, it is not my favorite genre. I mean, it's, gonna, it's still going to be RPGs and action-adventure. But I like first-person shoot-ups a lot more than I did 20 years ago. It's because of GoldenEye. And, of course, um, no one does platform games as good as Nintendo or Nintendo's um, second party games like Rare. Banjo is probably the probably hmm, I would say Banjo, the first Banjo game, probably my favorite non-Mario 3D platform of all time. Closely followed by Donkey Kong 64. Because Rare at that time was you know on a par with Nintendo. So you had Nintendo's own studios you know, banging out amazing games. You got Rare banging out some amazing second party games. Well, technically the first party, but second party studio. But the main thing is, I liked about N64 was it suited my lifestyle at that time. So I got it around Christmas 96. It was a Nintendo 64 bundle. And it was my last year in college. And also at that time, I already had a, a Sega Saturn a year before. I have not purchased... If I remember correctly, I have not purchased the PlayStation yet because I was never really. I mean, I'm, I'm a big Sony fan now, but back then, you know, I was just in my mind, I was thinking, oh, what is Sony doing in the gaming gaming world? Stick to your movies, stick to your Sony records or technology, your TVs, your Walkmans or whatever. You know, it kind of feel like a company coming in, not really serious about games, want to take their gaming. You know to geek out of you and so on but that was then though now Sony's a totally different company and one of my favorites as well and of course come 97 I finished college then they're ready to go to university and as anybody who knows who studies who goes to university especially in art and design graphic design and so on you're always out of pocket you never had any money <laughs> because being a graphic designer, you had to have all the tools, you had to have a PC, and so on. Not to mention that I, was, I had another console, and I was also into other geeky stuff as well, like buying comics, um, into uh, buying videos of VHS at that time, going to cinema a lot. So I was, I was actually spending a lot more money than I really needed to, really. And uh, yeah, like I had a part time job, but like I said, N64 suited my lifestyle because, yeah, you didn't have that many games compared to Sony, but when they do come out, they were fantastic games. And because I was so busy doing part time work, uh, studying, homework, and so on, so when I do get a game, I won't spend like five, six, seven, eight hours on it like I did on the Super Nintendo when I was in school. So, when Nintendo 64 being a, like a young adult, adult, you had college, university, you had a part time job. And you didn't have that much money, right? Because your parents, you know, start to reduce that <laughs> ball. They practically stop giving me money. So, you know, when I got a game, I played it like an hour, two hours a day if I was lucky, homework, part time work, and everything like that, right? So, whenever a game comes out, I would save it, I would play it till it literally finishes it, 100% it, then buy the next game. So unlike today where I have a full-time job and a decent job at like that, where I can actually buy multiple games, I've got so many games that I bought even 10 years ago. I still got games from Dreamcast, GameCube, PS2 that are still sealed. That I've not even played. That's how bad it is. And I've, and I've still got, and I've got multiple copies of the same game that I got from, say, uh, PS2. Because they've been remade for PS3, PS4. I even got it downloaded somewhere. So I literally got four or five games that I had originally on the PS2 or GameCube that is still sealed, which is ridiculous. But back then, you had one game that survived for three to six months, and you just played the death out of it because it was that style. 
and I'm thankful for it because you know I just didn't have enough money. So that is why I will always cherish the N64. But at the same time, that's also the reason why it didn't fare too well against uh, Sony, because it didn't have enough games. It didn't have enough variety of games either, you know, because on the PlayStation 2, he had all the FIFA games, all the Madden games, all the EA kind of mainstream games, you know. And also, the N64 at the time didn't have that many uh, mature games, adult games. You know, you look at some of the, the artwork, it's very... Um, colorful so a lot of uh, kids growing up from the Super Nintendo have become adults and they're kind of moving on so uh, so um, the PlayStation 1 suited their lifestyle and also having a cartridge didn't really help either me personally I don't mind it but as for the mainstream I can see why because you can put more games to it CG cutscenes were coming in Every, everybody loved the CG cutscene uh, it was cheaper to make so it was its own kind of Nintendo's own fault, really, at the same time. But I personally like the cartridge form. That's why I'm glad that Switch is a cartridge-based system. So anyway, so I'd like to say thank you for watching this video this far. Please let me know. Did you have a Nintendo 64 grown up? Did you have the other two consoles growing up? Which one's your favorite? Did you think the N64 will be the number one console at that time? Or did you foresee that Sony come, would have come in and become the most dominant console of that generation, selling over 100 million? Also, was one of these games, like say uh, the Super Mario 64 or Korean or Time, one of your favorite games of all time? Did you enjoy the cartridge based games? I would love to know that. Anyway, thank you for tuning in to another video with me, Talking Geeky Stuff. And look forward to the next one. I'd like to say thank you, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. And please stay safe. Goodbye.